Jack, no. Well, we got my boy Logan Allen here. Uh, this is one of our first guests in a while, right, Kilmer? We haven't had a guest in a minute. Yeah, since uh, probably, um, yeah, Kirk, probably. Christian Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. They just lost last night. You see that? Yeah, that was tough. You really hate to so see it. Bad. You do hate, hate to see it. it. Yeah. What uh? What the fuck happened? Did they lose some guys along the way, or did they just? Ever yeah, did you see that? Since D, they were eight and two with D Hop, and then after that, it was like yeah, that makes sense. Like one and three and six or something like that. It was something something stupid. Graham, you're you're buddies with him, right? Are you fairly? He's a good dude. Yeah. Everybody, Are you a golfer? Yes. Yes. Everybody loves. Everybody says good things about Kirk too. Yeah. By the way, Christian Kirk him. was a sweetheart. I mean, I hadn't. I had just seen him like you know. You know the conversations you have when you're out fucking old town, especially me. I'm like, uh, you know, a lot of substance in those. A lot of. Conversations. I'm sure they're, they're probably pretty substance filled, to be honest. But I not this, I can't recall them. But I remember <laughs> talking to him and uh, and just thinking he was a, he was a really nice guy. And then he came. He was just like so humble and nice guy. Mm -hmm. are, have you are you familiar with him? Have you met him? I've never met him. I just you hear about him out all the time, especially through Graham and stuff. Too. Yeah. Everybody says nothing but nice things about him. This uh, your Arizona vibe out here are you are you have you been coming out here have you been living out here for a while in, in the off seasons or? yeah so i've been uh i've been here every spring training since 2016 right after okay. i got drafted and i was traded to san diego mm -hmm. and then i officially moved move here right after like the covid shutdown when covid shut mm -hmm. down kind of happened the end of spring training 2020 when i was like yeah or yeah very beginning of march when they shut us all down like oh you got to go home yep i uh I couldn't go back to North Carolina where I'm from because, you know, I have a handicapped brother, 24-hour nursing. Like, oh, wow. So if I went home and I need to obviously stay ready to train, like, with this new COVID and everything that was around, I couldn't, like, yeah, I couldn't, like, leave the house. I can't expose my, you know, my brother because, right. you know, high risk and all that. So wow. I stayed out here with, with Molly's family at, right off of, like, Shay in the 101. Shout out Molly in the building. Yeah, seriously. The Chandlers really took care of me. It was unbelievable. Wow. So, like, I just... I had only known Arizona as far as Peoria was where the spring training was. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, like, nice. Yeah. I know Scottsdale because of the mall and Bottle Blonde. Like, Scottsdale like, really does fuck. It's, a, it's, it's an, unbelievable. It's a really dope So when place. I got to see, like, the neighborhoods, the different areas, yeah. like, the golf, all this stuff, I was like, you know, this place is sick. And the weather's awesome. So when we, mm -hmm. we went to play our 60-game COVID season in Cleveland, which was miserable. Uh, yeah, we'll touch on that a little bit. Yeah. All I right. wound up coming back that right in the, like that off season and I bought a place here and I was yeah. like, you know, what better place to be in the off season for training, weather, golf, and half the teams have spring training out here too. So mm -hmm. it's like, instead of moving three places in a year, like you got to move everywhere right. through the year. Yeah. Like I was going from, you know, North Carolina to see the family, going to Tampa where I used to train, out here for spring training, whatever affiliate or whatever team, like team you're playing for. And then you kind of would repeat. Now it's like I go from, Arizona, you know, I see the family over Christmas and stuff, but I go from Arizona to Cleveland, Cleveland back here. So it kind of limits a lot of that, you know, moving stress, the, the different, you kind of feel more grounded, I guess. Yeah, the best way absolutely. To put it. It's also just got like, it's obviously a baseball haven, but it has that, it just has that, that balance of like nice things, but also like nature, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a, there's a really cool nature element here that, you know, I don't know. I don't really have a pulse on the baseball guys much. Like, are you a nature guy? Are you, are you into that kind of thing? I like, am, but I like, wasn't into, like, coming from Asheville, North Carolina, like, I'm in the mountains. Like, it's, yeah, it's beautiful it's a there. Huge, yeah, it's gorgeous. Huge brewery is town. Boone? Like, is it's that, right near Boone, about an hour. Near Boone, so about Boone's hour right up Boone. the mountain. Uh, Boone's, because Boone's where App State is. So we used to Had a little over. shorty up in Boone at one point. Everybody loves Boone. <laughs> yeah, but that's it's really why I fell in love with the mountains. Oh, my God. Her mountains? Uh, her mountains, yeah. Her mountains, <laughs> yeah. but also just the mountains in general. Uh, just the aesthetic, you know? Boone was, it's freezing up What there. is it, App State? Appalachian State. So you know I went to Duke, played baseball yes. there. Yes. Um, and uh, North Carolina, man. That's where you were born and raised, right? Born in West, I was born in West Palm, but okay. I was raised in Asheville. So we moved to Asheville when I was like two, three years old. My parents just liked the mountains. And yeah. I was there so long, I was like, okay, it's just the mountains. And then right. seeing the Arizona, like... These are different styles, too. Different, like, but it different was like, vibes. it just intrigued me. Like, mm -hmm. it was like, now I've seen kind of like everything. And it's a good word about nature. It's just intriguing. It's just different. spent a lot of my mornings just looking out into the abyss, just staring at the mountains. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, North Carolina, that's what I wanted to touch on. I feel like 
it's a really it's a dope place. I mean, everyone has a small view of where they grow up, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I felt like when I went to North Carolina, it was my first time from the Northeast. So like people are a certain way, you know. And it's just cold weather. It just makes you gritty and like kind of me against you. And and um, went to North, you know, went to Duke and and uh, I kind of that was like really the first time my eyes got open to like new places, new vibes of people, you know. Um, and, and I fucking love the South. Like my parents, I'm gonna get my parent. My mom wants to have like a little ranch with like a fucking horse, and you know. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna. Hopefully she doesn't listen to this because that spoils the surprise. But uh, I wanna, I wanna put them out in North Carolina. I love it. Do you still have that feeling when you go home? Is it? I yeah. Mean, obviously it's home. It's home. So it's like it, it. But it the way it's changed. It's it's changed as far as the people and um, like some places when people move, like a lot more people come. Like it changes kind of that you know the vibe when you're home. Like right. when I go home, it, it, everything still vibes the same to me. It's just more people different out like i mean now it's such a brewery town and stuff like that so it was a very small town vibe where you grew up it was it was a small big town that makes sense like yeah, it has a lot sense. of people but it felt like the smallest town like yeah it really did like everybody knew everybody all the high schools and stuff were so close so it was like you know your rival high school was like you could have gone there because you right. live, still live close enough to it it right. was uh it, it it definitely has that small town vibe and like that still hasn't changed like mm -hmm. It's, I love going home. It's just a place that when I'm there, like, I get tired of being there yeah. too long. Just because I'm, thing. it's just, it sounds like bad. Like, I hate telling my mom, God, I hate being in Asheville. I don't hate Asheville. Yeah, like, yeah, I love yeah. Asheville. It's just like, no, I've, I can so totally different. relate. I can totally and like, relate. my mom and dad are at that point. Like, they want to, they want to get another place in like Florida and, you know, kind of have both. Like, they just mm -hmm. want somewhere, you know, different. They're like, oh, we love the mountains, but like the beach, like, we're beach people, we're water people. And I'm like, they spend most of their time, most of your parents spend most of their time. Yeah, they're in normally Carolina. in Asheville. Yeah, just because we have the my brother and the and nursing and stuff. They kind of right. have to monitor all that stuff. How like, old is your brother? So my brother is thirty four years old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's uh, severely handicapped, twenty four mm -hmm. hour nursing, like I said, but wow. wasn't born with it or anything like that. Just really, uh, yeah. He so was two, just developed. Yeah, he was two years old, and uh, you know the way my parents describe it is like the capillaries in his brainstem, like you know, kind of imploded, exploded, causing like a brain wow. aneurysm and was in a coma for over a year. Like, wow. Yeah. Over this was before year. you were born. This was way, like 10 years before I was born. So it was more of a, you know, like he was fine. Like he was like about to say his first words, two wow. years old, and then was in a coma for a long time. So my dad, uh, uh, you know, dad went That's bankrupt, crazy. like keeping mm -hmm. him in there. And mm -hmm. they were like, you know, like, yeah, you guys, you got to, start thinking about like your options here mm -hmm. with philip because you know you've been here for a year like you know we're keep this machine is keeping him alive you know my dad said he went to uh said he went to a funeral home to like look into caskets i mean this stuff's dark but like he yeah, no, look I mean, into caskets and he like opened one up and he just said like he had chills down his spine he couldn't do it shuts it goes goes back to the hospital mm -hmm. two days later philip wakes up like he just wow. couldn't bring himself to it and he was like you know the chills i got you know the the feeling I felt like I just and it was right there. I mean, he damn near went bankrupt. And my dad played professional hockey. My dad played for, like my dad's seventy years old, so he played back when mm -hmm. you know my dad got his ass kicked. Like he just got like nothing left. But mm. he you know he played hockey, successful businessman. Like mm -hmm. and he was willing to lose everything to keep him. Like you know it was kind of a situation where the ventilators, you, you know, the lights are on, but nobody's home. Like yeah. is there any? Like you don't know. Yeah. So like the, you know when it's fucking gnarly, it's terrifying a lot of perspective, but it was definitely terrifying. But yeah, he uh, he's he's doing a lot better now. I mean, we don't you know we never know how much time we have left with him. He has mm -hmm. some scares here and there. He had one this season with some some bleeding in his lungs, lung disease kind of stuff. But dude, this is why this, a, these conversations are so dope because to the fans or or just you know consumers of sports, mm -hmm. like they forget this element of these guys running around in uniforms. You just these numbers and these like assets to their yes. team you know like yeah. oh fuck him he's not you know what i mean meanwhile like you're worried about your brother surviving and you know there's just these human elements i think got lost in the shuffle a bit yeah um especially with sports and sports media yeah and what gets clicks and what's talked about you know yeah and that's one thing like i kind of learned i was i'm always such a people pleaser man like i always want to make you know uh, I'm always, I'm too nice is what I'm yeah. the best way I had to describe it. So like, you know, this year, you know, I was 
struggling quite a bit, got sent down. I'm like, ah, like, you know, like mm-hmm. this, this sucks. Then this stuff happens to Philip. And then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, I got to go home. Like, like, we don't know what's going to happen, this and that. I get a call from the team like, hey, I'm sorry, what's going on? But uh, we're calling you back up. And I'm like, okay, like, like, can you pitch through this? And I'm like, yeah. So I got, went the next day and pitched in Tampa and didn't do, didn't do great. But, yeah. um, I mean, you know, I had to start realizing, like, that was kind of a turning point for me where I kind of had to say, like, you know, screw all these people because it was like, no one realizes what I'm doing with them back. Not right. even, you know, the, the, you know, ownership of the team. Some people knew, but I wasn't telling any of the, nobody really knew. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that, those kind of things people don't ever realize what anybody's going through in sports. It really, it and that's really, why you see so many mental... You know, if, if these people that it really bothers, they don't have a routine. Because you're programmed to bury it as an athlete. Mm-hmm. You know what bury I mean? Like, everything. Obviously, just as a competitor yourself, like you have a negative energy and not being fully invested in the moment and what you're doing on the field is very detrimental to your game, you know? So you, you bury it because it's like, this is it's a survival, like fight or flight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, you bury these things and, and move forward. And... It's just, there's, obviously that's very harmful. You know what I mean? It's super harmful to somebody's being in general if you're not addressing and living with what's going on and being, you know, balanced and present in the moment of your Mm -hmm. life, you know? And it's hard to weigh the pros and cons of like, you know, is it taking away from, you know, these life, these life events that could really take you out of your vibe as an athlete. And people don't understand, like, I really don't think people understand the level of mental energy that's spent to be a baseball player or, or any athlete in general. They, you know, it's obviously equated to physical capabilities and talents and skills, going back to this idea of just like kind of assuming things about athletes. And if you've never played at that level and at that demand and when your whole family's riding on it and your whole future's riding on it, you know, and, and rising to the occasion, especially when in the, as things in your life, off the camera or off the field are are hard you right. know it's extremely extremely challenging to be yourself to be the guy that you even feel like you can be you yeah. know or you are yeah and that, it's even like the little things like that's a big thing like you know yeah. my brother being in such a terrible circumstance like he pulled out everything went great like didn't actually wind up having to to leave because right. you know that you know having to leave mid-season can change a lot of things mm-hmm. for one your career contract because as much as the owners do take care of you it's it's, you know, it's, a it's still a business. It's, yeah. a, it's a business. So, um, but it, the, people don't realize that the littlest things, like, you know, it's, it's still a real thing. There's major league baseball players that cannot stand playing in front of their family. Like, if mm-hmm. your family's, if, like, if, if my family's there, like, you know, like, I don't, I leave the tickets. I usually leave them under Molly or somebody else, and yeah. I don't want to know if they're in the suite. They're they don't know sitting, where they are. I don't want to know where <laughs> they're at. I want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Just, that's crazy. There's a lot of that's guys that are like that. Like even that yeah. kind of thing. Like you're, out, you're you're walking off the field or walking onto the field, and you just, you know, my mom's got bl- bright platinum blonde hair mm-hmm. and is all glittered out, she's blinged hard, out. She's, she's hard to miss. She's so hard to miss. I think everybody can agree <laughs> with that. She is decked out in Chanel and all this. I mean, twenty. I mean, it's yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. So like, I, I don't. You don't miss her. Just so it's step like, mom you know, to the fucking bleachers. Get, oh my, throw her in the upper deck, and I still miss <laughs> her. It's just like. You know, you catch that on there, and that can just get that can yeah. get you out of rhythm, and it's that that's just me. For, but some people are like that with, you know, if their their dad was harder on them growing up when it came to sports or wh- whatever it is. So it's like no, that's a great point. There's just so many. I find it I I find it hard to sympathize with the sports fans and sport. I give sports fans and sports media a hard time a lot of times on here because I'm obviously you know homies with the athletes and I've I've been in those shoes before, and I just find it so hard to believe that you can't understand because everyone's human every single person like there's a general conversation about empathy that we have all the time just understanding like the people you walk by like cut the guy that cuts you off or the guy that runs by and cuts you off he's probably in a rush probably something happening you know who knows what these people have experienced and on that level with athletes it's just like it's hard for me to 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 get on board with people treating athletes as they do and i understand it's the it's the nature you're getting of the beast. $10 million, man. Suck it up. You know yeah. what I mean? But, like, bro, I have a hard time. I have no fucking reason to. Some days you just have a hard time getting up out of bed. You know what I mean? Some days there's, you know, like you said, these minor things that, that I'm not able to be myself and be as creative as I want to be, you know, and I can. And really, those ebbs and flows of life, what I'm saying is they're natural to being human. That's what being human is about. 
And it's hard for me to sympathize with fans and the other human beings that are kind of putting people under a microscope just because they're good at a sport. Mm -hmm. They've dedicated their life to being good at a sport, you know? They still ha are living their life. They're still having a human experience. And it's, it's kind of one of the undertones of this conversation in general. Like when I have athletes on, I love to shine a light on it, just the human aspect. Obviously, your brother, there's probably so much. There's obviously, you could talk about this forever, but when I first hear that, the first place my mind goes is the perspective that gives you, you know, oh growing God. up. How old? He was 10 years older than you? He is 10 years older than me. So, it, yeah. So when it happened, he was he was two years old. So I wasn't even, like, in yeah. the conversation yet. Right, it's right. like, even that put it, puts things in perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm 24 now. Like, the, fa young the, fact, that, yeah, the fact that he's here, like, at all is, like, mm -hmm. you know, just a blessing. blessing Something I'm grateful yeah. for every day. But every day that growing up around him and my family and even the negative stuff, like, people don't, you, like, oh, yeah. going home is home, right? But, mm -hmm. like... What people don't understand is going home is, you know, the the nursing alarms at night, the sound of a ventilator, the mm -hmm. sound of, you know, the nurses yeah, running around, traumatic. people freaking out. Like, you know, I've been there when he's, you know, something's gone wrong and I hear, you know, you hear sirens in the middle of the night, go downstairs and he's getting ambu bagged with his trach and stuff. And you're like, That's you know, home is home, traumatic. but like it's... Yeah. And it's like associated still, with that. It is, but it put, but even though it's like, that's why I always... You never want to say it like when I was doing stuff for my foundation. It's like I wish people got to, I don't wish people got to have my circumstance on anybody. I wish people all could feel the perspective mm -hmm. and what it did for me mm -hmm. for that for for this like my experience, what it did to me personally. I wish everybody could could feel this because it changes uh, yeah. how you go about your your mm -hmm. life as an athlete, as a businessman, to the point where like yeah, it it, it just it makes you more present in the fact that baseball is not who I am. It's just what it's my job. It's just what I do. It's, it's an interesting. It's a really good sounds, point. It's like the negative stuff of it, perspective-wise, molded me just as much or more than, you know, the positive stuff and like teaching love and caring. And, you know, that's the whole reason I have foundation and all the little little things I do. Because What's your foundation? Uh, what's the basis of it? The basis of it is to help with uh, special needs families and stuff with in-home health care. That's more the the route I'm, I'm trying trying to stay Obviously, on. Obviously, that's a real purpose for you it's as well. It's just, yeah, we have in-home health care, and I'm lucky my, my family's been able to, you know, afford it and have the best insurance and stuff for them. But, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't imagine the families that, like, even the amount of money like, we have to put every month with insurance to, you know, medical supplies, formula, whatever. Life is fucking hard, and you're able. You're able exactly. able-bodied, able-minded. So that There's just so just, many people out here that aren't yeah. able-bodied or able-minded mm -hmm. or, or are shy on resources or lacking in some way, you know, and it's, again, that general empathy of, fuck, man, this is a hard, that's part of the human experience of these struggles. Mm -hmm. That's really, really interesting to grow up in a home, you know, grow up in a home where, you know, you're, that's more or less the norm. That's your normal. Yeah, you know? that like, was my you normal. came into that experience. And, and we didn't have nurses until I was probably, you know, 12 or 13 is when we first started having nurses because he had an incident, lung collapse, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Put a pacemaker in at Duke. They had to fly him in a helicopter to Duke. And, you know, I'll, I'll never forget just sitting. I was sitting on his bed right where they took him away. And I I sat there for 10 hours till my travel ball coach came and picked me up in the morning because my mm -hmm. family was over there. You were, what, 12 years old? 12, 13, yeah, 11, 12 years old. Like that. And uh, I just, like, never forget. I'm like, oh, my God, like, you know, what's going to happen? You know, everything was fine. Pulled through. We start having nurses. But, like, this... You know, it, it just it, it put it in perspective of all the bad things too for me. Even then, like okay, like finding the positives and things. Like even as a little kid, like you're finding out more and more and more and more. It's an accelerated maturing process, to say the least. Oh my God, yeah. Like, cause but, a kid, think about it. You're not like, uh, you know, my childhood. I had I was I was free of any of those types of traumas, and it's mm -hmm. just like think, kid, as a kid, you're just so naive or. Not even naive. It's just you're not you're not privy you're to just, you just don't know. health issues. Yeah, and, like, you know you what I mean. Yeah, you don't know a lot. And about to introduce it. that to you as this is a part of life at such an early phase, I mean, it's such an accelerated maturing process. Yeah, I mean, that, I think the thing for me was like just growing up, being around it. Like I had to answer questions as a twelve year old, like uh, thirteen, sixteen, whatever. That you know, most people wouldn't want to you know be comfortable answering i mean we would go in the grocery store when i was younger and i used to hate like we, we could wheel philip around when he was a little mm -hmm. healthier and people the looks the points like mommy what's wrong with this kid like mm -hmm. what's wrong with him and it was 
the part of the whole reason I did what I did is I wanted to like shine a light on like mm. people in my circumstance and like, you know, there's ways to bring a lot of positivity out of this. Like, you know, when I first launched the foundation, like my whole thing growing up was people like, what's wrong with him or what's his handicap? And I just, I would say, what handicap? That's all I would say. Like, mm. What handicap? Like, that's, that's my big brother. Like that's mm. all I would, that's how my par parents taught me growing up and everything. Love so that. the first thing I did was the foundation because we couldn't do events, COVID, all that. Just did t-shirts said what handicap on it and and i instead of I love that. picking where i did it i just put the miracle league of like the the miracle league company as like this is where the, the proceeds are going to go we're actually donating to that here in the next few weeks but i have to donate well, I we it. should we should make a we should plug that that donation but so it's not a few weeks so, left you said yeah well we we did we finished the the t-shirt sales and stuff so that's getting put into my foundation because it took so long to get like the 501c3 stuff oh, yeah. like that is a that's a real thing yeah it took like almost a year and like, you know, you have everything done with it and stuff. So they're the company we partnered with did the t-shirts. The proceeds are going to my foundation. I'm donating to the Miracle League because the Miracle League was my first like real taste of like, you know, giving back to the community. I did it every Saturday in high school. Like when I went to high school, it was every Saturday, the entire school year. Even when we had baseball, like I would, I would have to uh, punish punishment conditioning because like missing practice. I still went. Love I didn't that. care. I went, and it was kind of like uh, I felt closer to my brother by going and volunteering at these That's things. Really it was That's the first cool. thing I did. So I was like, all right, the first you know proceeds will go here, and then we'll start working with events for you know mm. families, and but still you know working with the Miracle League and stuff as well. It was more of a like it made me feel closer to my brother when I wasn't there, especially because Philip you know can't walk, can't talk. Like like I've never heard Philip say anything. He had wow. a trick like. It puts it that puts a lot in perspective. Like I would give up every dollar really I made playing professional baseball right now if you told me doing that. I could hear him say one one word. I don't mean like hey Steve. I don't mean like Steve's coming over to console I you. I know. <laughs> Therapy dog. God, you should stop. That's right, Mr. Steve. It's okay. Steve needs a business card. He'd have like everything on it. He's, he's, the, he's the CEO. We're all just the employees. Tenured vet. Since the dawn of time, men have always loved to chug beer. In the old times of Bavaria, the men of Germany would spend their Oktoberfest drinking out of a festive beer stein. In the 1980s, fraternity brothers all over America spent their Greek week pounding beer out of a funnel. And for the last four decades, the world went silent. Then came the Chug Bud, the new revolutionary way to chug a beer. With the combination of a beer bong and a shotgun, this drinking device is scientifically proven to help you chug your beer quickly and easily. Oh, and did I mention it fits in your pocket? Go to ChugBuds.com and use promo code YNK69 to get 10% off your entire order. That's ChugBuds, C-H-U-G-B-U-D-S dot com and promo code YNK69 to get 10% off your entire order. ChugBud. Your beard just got a new best friend. But yeah, like, it just puts, I, that puts it into perspective for me. So like, you know, the fact that he'll never, Philip would never be able to really, without help and stuff, really be a part of Miracle League. It'd be difficult to have him be a part of the Miracle League. And mm -hmm. like, me doing that, and especially being, you know, in Florida for my last two years of high school. So that was like, I was far mm -hmm. from my parents. I was away from Philip, like. I never say bye. I hate leaving him. So I, I never say bye to him. I never, because uh, I don't like that. And he just gives me the face. Like, I, like for some reason, him and I's like vibe is just different. Yeah. Like, you can ask, like, anybody. Of Mom, like, it's just different. Yeah. He just lights it's up. It's a brotherly and, bond. It doesn't matter. And it's, it's, it's just different. So it's like, you know, there was always some things I did and how I handled it. And it was like, it just, it made everything that I was doing for the community that much more, like, it's really cool. Close to me. Because, you know, people have their, like, oh, you know, that foundation's awesome, but no, not many people know why. Mm -hmm. Like they know like what it's for. Yeah, I didn't they know, know that a, about you. I know you. it's a great. I cause. thought you were okay. Now I think you're a lot cooler. <laughs> well, thank you. But uh, uh, but yeah, man, that's really fucking cool, and it's really special. I mean, it's uh, it's hard to rationalize. You know, we I know you know I'm a big positive thinker, and mm -hmm. and and you know a lot of times I think about it, and I'm like. I never think I'm there or I've made a lot of growth in that direction, but I think about it a lot when I drive by and I see people, you know, in a wheelchair or struggling and the things I see in day-to-day -day life. And I'm just like, 
how easy would it be for me to think positively and be on this, you know, enlightened path that I'm that I'm walking towards, you know, if if I had a real, you know, if I had a real everyday reminder trauma, you know, mm-hmm. or everyday reminder, you know, lack, lack, you know, lacking the mobility to be able to stand up. I mean, I play beer pong and make songs and I can barely get out of bed some days with my fucking <laughs> oh, back. My God. So I'm probably on that path. <laughs> But uh, you know, it's 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 one of those things I think about, and it's it's uh, as much as it's so unbelievably etched in your being, which is which is a real, it's a gift. You know what I mean? It's like a gift Absolutely. from him to you, like the gift that he mm-hmm. gave you of your perspective being that. It's just so mature, and, and like you know, it's like anything. How, how do you? How do you gain, you have to have experience, call it experiential wisdom. Like mm-hmm. you go through these things and then you walk with those things as you move forward. And, you know, as, as terrible at it, as it is, it's, it's, it's one of those things that he's given you the greatest gift. Like you, you have a more enlightened experience so you at a younger at it, age. You look at it that way. Like mm-hmm. you have that, that's one thing that I love about you is how, like your positivity yeah. about it. Like a lot of people don't look at things that way. And it's not that it's like, oh, like how could it? It's like. It's almost like sad because if they could, it's just a little it's a switch. Like, switch. It's just a yeah. little switch, but yeah. it's also like, you know, it's really hard to even like, you know, I have that perspective. It's how I, there's still times that like, yeah, you know, I just, Stan just took me way back, right? And mm-hmm. it's like, God, you're angry and you're pissed, but then that little switch from your perspective will mm-hmm. click in and then like everything, the, you know, anger, everything just kind of yeah. dissipates, it goes away. So but for some people, it's like, Oh, like why, like whether it is God, whatever, like why mm-hmm. would you do this to me? That creates more problems in itself it rather than like. It's not an answer you're going to be able to find, you know what I mean? And anywhere. You have to make that choice. What, what is it going to be? Are you going to let it poison your, your existence or not? Or, let, or fulfill it, plant exactly. the seeds to more things, you know? And it's easier said than done, you know? But when you think about your parents and what they've gone through and talk about your dad and the sacrifices, even all those things. All those things that you got to see front row, just like what life is really about. Doesn't, you know, you obtain things and it's all like we're kind of in a culture where it's all about acquiring things. Like, I got that, I did this. You know, you said something earlier about, you know, not being you you are who you are. It's not it's what you do, it's not who you are. You think you sit down with somebody, what's really one of the first questions? Like, what do you do? You know, yeah. it's like that. It's like That's automat- why athletes have a hard time answering that question, though. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you do too. Like, you go into a, I mean, like, like when you go into a, I don't know, you go into a coffee shop. You're sitting there by yourself reading a book. <laughs> I usually lie. Yeah, what? Well, exactly. Sports media. Exactly. Oh God. <laughs> They're like, oh, I don't want to talk to this guy. I'm not going to leave him alone. On, can't comment on that. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, like, still, like every. It's the same with me. Like. And yeah. a lot of baseball guys, like, if I'm in a coffee shop and someone comes up, or, like, sitting next to someone, oh, catch a conversation, like, oh, what, what do you do? Yeah. That, it goes in your head, like, God, do I really want to open this can of worms up? Because yeah, yeah, the yeah. second you say it, it's like, on the off chance, you know, he's a, a, a baseball fan or something like that, then, yeah. you know, you're answering questions about what you do, like, what you do, and they instantly think it's who you are. Right. The second they, you answer that question and say, you know, I'm a, I'm a recording artist. Mm-hmm. They think that's who you are, mm-hmm. and in some ways, it's helped mold you to the person you are. But yeah. that's just not, a part. It's just, just a part. Just of an it. aspect. Yeah. It's just a little aspect of like mm-hmm. who you are. Mm-hmm. It's not the entire picture. But right. random people that you know ask, "Oh, I'm a baseball player." Right. Immediately, their persona and view of me is like, "That's what I am. Like, I am just a baseball player." Mm-hmm. That's where the being present and mindset and everything all comes around full circle. Now, were you um, segueing into your young, like young career, uh, and just as as you were growing up in Asheville, you're obviously noticeably probably one of the best, or the best guy, or one of the better player, better athletes in the town um, at a young age. Where, uh, because of how you know your circumstances with Philip and and just seeing be, your home experience, were you have you always kind of had a, a mindfulness effort at a young age? Or like, obviously, I, I talk with athletes a lot about this. There's a lot of pro guys that have no mind, mindfulness, really. They're just, you know, wired to, to perform at a high level. But 
I try to shine a light on how important the mental aspect of a game like baseball, where it's driven, it's failure, you know, it's failure. A majority of the time you're failing, you know, it's a struggle, it's a grind. Um, there's a men- really, really, really pivotal mental aspect to it. Um, and, you know, I just asked this question because I know how I was as a young, as a high school baseball player. I mean, I was literally just thinking about fucking hitting home runs, getting strikeouts, and yeah, but like hooking, that's, up, hooking up with the babes. Yeah, but that's <laughs> but also that's normal. Like people don't realize like when you're younger and like yeah, so you said like being the best of the town. Like I was one of the better players in town, but I wasn't like the guy of the town. I wasn't. Mm-mm. You know, Cameron Maven came from my hometown. Yep. Cam Cam was the man. Like you know, like he, yeah. said, he just retired. Actually, big shout out to Cam. But you know had a long career he was like the first guy to really like be like in our around our age it was like yeah you want to be like camp mm-hmm. guy you're older than me was first round pick with the with the braves and so he, he retired and he's only a year older than no, no 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 this other uh, cam's god i think cam's, cam's older cam's he's like way older. he's like he's in his mid-30s mid-30s yeah. i believe he's in yeah and uh the, this other uh, guy I played up growing with, one of my best friends like you know he was a year older than me but like he was like the next he was the guy thing. yeah he's the dog so, like, I was still a big part of that, just you're younger, yeah. but, like, you know, sometimes I was kind of, you know, forgotten in, like, the town, which didn't matter to anything to me. If anything, it motivated me it more definitely being does. in a small town. But, like, you know, being, you, you don't realize the mental stuff you're doing when you're playing when you're younger. And then, like, looking back now, I'm like, you know, I was kind of, like, manifesting success when I didn't even realize I feel it. the exact same way. Because you're sitting there, like, you're, like, getting ready to play travel ball. Like, you're 12 years old, and you're, like, you're on deck. And all you're, like, you're, you're excited for the game. You're going to the field, like, seeing that home run mm-hmm. that you're going to hit or yeah. seeing how you're going to pitch. But back then, like, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just excited to get to the game. But yeah. that, like, those thoughts are running through your head. You know, now it's to the point where, like, you know, I'm try- I'm focusing on those, like, that manifesting meditation, like, seeing things before it happens Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until this past you know this past spring training that like when i really dove into the you know focusing and making that a part of my routine Mm -hmm. that like i realized like i did this when i was little when i had that same realization then like when i when times got tough and i was like oh it sucks and then i started doing it and things started getting better i'm like if i had kept the same mindset like learned that when i was like 12 13 years old like I wouldn't have had to go, like, it's all part of your growth, right? right? But, like, it was, like, I did it when I was younger. You get away from it because, like, it's normal. Your mind wanders. Yep. Things happen. Things change. Yep. You know, you think you, you don't even know. Like, back then, I didn't even know what I was doing. Right. And it just worked out that way. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of athletes. And then. I think that's a, lot of, that's a lot of fucking people. People in general. Like, I, think, I, think, I think we call it growing up, or like, growing down. You know what I mean? Like, I literally feel like kids have it fucking figured out. Being able to. You said something when baseball was fun again, you know, when, back when baseball yeah. was fun, you know, and, and there, there's, there's a reality to it. Like, there's a reality to, hey, like, more or less my fucking livelihood rides on, to a certain extent, you know, mm-hmm. my livelihood rides on my performance. Think about all the things that you could give your family, your friends, and so much is tied to your performance. It's obviously very hard to keep it just as fun as when it didn't mean anything. You could go home and mom gave you a fucking hot dog and you went, yeah, you, whatever the fuck you did after a game. You know what I mean? Like, gosh. there's a whole other element that's introduced. And I try to remind myself, something I write in my journal every day is just like, you know, I'm a joyful person. I laugh, smile every day. Like, I found myself, you know, I look back, I would talk to my mom when I was home, just like, I was like a really goofy kid, always joking and laughing yeah. and, and, somewhere along the line of growing up, you know, like you kind of lose that and it becomes a lot more transactional. Like even being in the content game, like it's a weird balance because like we're living life and, and you know, our content, like yeah. that's the content. Like I don't do posed content. In any it's way. not so, shit. So half the time I'm like, Oh, someone catch this film, this group. Right. And it's like, we're probably do, we probably do the best at this or really well in regards to just like living life and not, living for creating content but it's like this balance like i want to just fucking live and be here in this moment and that's it like that's what being alive is about right you know now hopefully he's over there not too drunk to fucking whip out his fucking phone and film it you know what i mean but it's it's that element of like you know i try to remind myself making music like yeah you know 
this is how I make money. It's, shit. it's, it's a fucking job. But <laughs> when, I, when I brought it back into my room, like I'll show you the studio. Right. I brought it into my fucking room. I used to go to big studios, this and that. How much more fun was it? It just became fun again. Yeah. And, and the pressures of, you know, it all kind of went by the wayside a little bit. It was just like, I'm going to have fun creating this. If it so happens to be a good song and it becomes monetary, you know, great. If not, fuck it. You know what I mean? But I'm doing what I want to do, you know? And, and that's what I challenge you and, and I challenge all athletes or really anyone with whatever they're doing, you know, like this is a game you fucking loved, you know, and you still do love, obviously. You know, you're playing it and you're devoting so much of your existence to it. So it's this balance of like, I just feel like your rewards Yes, you put the work in. You know, there's work. There's a work aspect mm -hmm. to it. You show up on time. You fucking do your workouts. You do everything you're supposed to do. But the challenge is to when you go out on the, in between the lines, like how much fun can you have? You know what I mean? Because you've done all the work. It's no longer work. It's just time to be. You know, like mm -hmm. you're just a human being. You be you. Be you. Go do what you do. You know what I mean? And I had this conversation with Marcus a few years. It was like three years ago. And it was like kind of a breakthrough conversation. It's just like he kind of realized like he, he let a lot of people, you know, the, he, he yeah. takes the fuel. He loves that. Yeah. But there's one thing channeling that and it's another thing to like let, let it, it get to you. Yeah. And just kind of like let it almost be more important than what you're actually there mm -hmm. to do. You know and what I mean? Same issue. And yeah. It's, it's, it's like we resonate on that point of like, you know, I'm, when I said ba when baseball was fun, baseball is, is still fun to me now. Mm -hmm. But from the time of you know, June 18th, 2019, at Major League debut. Mm -hmm. And uh, just before spring training of this year, baseball wasn't that fun for me. Mm -hmm. it, it, became, it became a business, a Fucking real serious. business, and it became a real business really quick. Mm -hmm. And it was when I figured out, like, you know, yes, I put in the work. I like, work out, like, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. that was, like, the thing I, I used to think that's all I have to do, mm -hmm. prepare and all this stuff. Yeah. Then when I tapped into this whole side of, you know, like the, the manifesting and like the kind of replaying it through my head before it happened. So did that happen? Did things. that happen? Not to cut you off. Did that happen mm -hmm. as you came into the big leagues or was there something, was it struggles that happened that then forced you to walk towards it? Yes. So, so the way I would explain it was my debut, right? And I, and I, I hate to use the debut because I had a phenomenal debut. Something mm -hmm. I'll never forget. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't supposed to be added to the roster or anything until after that year because I was so young. Like I still mm -hmm. had a whole nother, you know, year of control before You're the really Padres young. called I didn't me know up. You were this young. Yeah, really baby. Young. But I debuted against the Brewers and I threw seven scoreless innings. My debut got a base hit off of Brandon Woodruff. Like <laughs> did the whole thing. Like I'm the, on top the full of the full debut. I'm on top of the world. Like I've you know got my first win. You know first hit all this in one day. Mm -hmm. But like I'll never forget like that, that when I started realizing the mental stuff before it. Like those two nights leading up to my debut. Like I ran through that moment in my head. Not only those two days, but every day since I was a little kid. And like, I literally have chills on my arms right now because everything I thought about that I wanted out of it, I did it. And mm -hmm. I did it over and over again in my head. And then it actually fucking happened. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. It literally happened. Yeah. And then after that, like, I was like, all right, now everything's going to be like that. And I started to get off this path of like, you know, I realized that, but did I, re like, when I realized that, did I dive into it? No. I like thought that was like, oh, it's like, you mm -hmm. know, like universe looking out for me. Like, it'll keep happening. Yeah. Like, it's not how it no, works. it's not how it works. Yeah. You know, because I, you know, started my I did, I did it again. Beat the Orioles my second time. I started off 2-0, 1-5 ERA. You're like, fucking Cy Young. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you know, I'm, you know, you know, yeah. pay, pay me. Like, yeah. you know, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And a couple starts and a few mm -hmm. trips to the bullpen to help out and a couple times facing the Dodgers later, like, I am right back to planet Earth. And it mm -hmm. was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Then I got traded to a new team. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, many people experienced name changes. And those name changes were very pivotal moments in their lives. You have transformed through your time here. And you need to have a new name that represents that transformation. I'm excited for all the journeys you'll go on from here. And I trust that you will impact many people's lives in the process. I'm honored to have known you. 
for now, your name is Steve. OnlySteves.com. Uh, so as you as the as um the struggles happened, were you already tuning it like well not even struggles just like kind of as it evened out and you had some bad outings, were you already going towards the spiritual mental stuff yet or is it is it was no after? it's even after that because like there mm-hmm. was it was still this like the talent and stuff that I had like mm-hmm. I was still doing some of this so I just thought it was like right. you know bad stretch this and that yeah. like all the excuses every every athlete makes mm-hmm. without even realizing it right. like. But it was to a point when, you know, then I, I get traded and, you know, I'm trying to feel like, well, you know, what is going on? And then that's when it started to. You get called kind of, to it. Yes. It was almost like I get, and, and, it, and it, it manifested itself in weird ways. So, like, I'm, I'm obviously struggling. Like, you know, it wasn't like I was really bad. It was just, like, yeah, really just good. Not what you... it, wasn't, it wasn't, like, in between, like, normal baseball. It was. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. It was, like, it was weird. Yeah. Then I, you know, I you wind up going back and like I'm like, okay, this off season I got to hammer it hard. Blah, blah, blah. I wind up meeting Molly and we start and like she starts talking about all her like she is. Like, so all is spiritual. so is the women. It is. It really is. But the source you know, of life. You know, she got me into like you know talking about some of this stuff and like I explained the same thing to her. I was like, everything felt so good. Like mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I still have all the talent. Everybody still loves me. I have high rank prospect. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. All the, the BS. Yeah. But like it wasn't until I like. She got me to watch The Secret. I know you've yeah, talked yeah. about it, seen it, everybody. Oh, yeah. That, that was one of you the know. first things I watched that got me down that path. It's like a great we, buffer. Yeah. We were like, watch, watch it. And I'm like, well, I'm like, am I really going to dive into this? And then I'm like this by, by, the, by the end of it. Yeah. Like, Couldn't relate paper, anymore. Like, yeah. I was like, well, like, what? Like, we need to go more than this. We start diving in more. I need more. And more, 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 more. And then it, it, and it got to the point where then even like right after that, you know, I started noticing a difference in my work ethic, my habits, my, mm-hmm. my ability to, you know, stay present. Like, cause it's yeah. normal for your mind to wander. But like when I had first got to the big leagues, it was like, okay, I'm doing good. And you're, you're locked in. And then the second something happens, your mind wanders to absolutely everything to what you had to breakfast that morning to like, did I work hard enough? And yeah, the doubts creep in. The and, doubts are mm-hmm. the biggest, like once you can, you know, the, yeah. start inhaling the, the, like, the gratefulness and mm-hmm. then exhaling the love you have like just your your vibe that's when i started like like my like learning about vibrations and vibing higher and mm-hmm. like kind of learning to manifest that it's just stuff. things that like as a baseball player i mean yeah people grow up and have different experiences but i just know how foreign it is that's why i love this platform i just mm-hmm. feel like we have so many young baseball players that watch this and this this type of input like because as a kid growing up you you spoke to it already just like you're a baseball player man it's like I'm going to fucking outwork everyone. You know what I mean? And that's how you get better. And it, it is. There's a lot of validity to that. Like, you obviously have your certain God gifts, Tackle. God-given abilities. And then there's all the work, all the time spent. And there's really none spent on any of this. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, I can't say none as a blanket statement. But generally yeah. speaking, as a culture in sports, it's just not. It's like, woo-woo. Like, oh, it's hippie shit, bro. Just Go show ahead. Yeah. Just get down and give me 20 and fucking run around and give yeah, me 10 laps. Take a lap. Yeah. I mean, throw a bullpen and keep it down. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's really an interesting, this is a great, this has been a really interesting conversation so far, but I think it's really dope to come on and hear honest trials and tribulations of a fucking big leaguer. It's not all fucking glitz and glamour and it's really fucking hard. Mm-hmm. And the things that, I mean, the things that drive you I mean, there's a, there's a quote I read, I think, yesterday. It's like, pain is the precursor to growth. And it's like, the things that drive you towards, you know, the spirituality and this presence, being able to be present in your life as a human being, which then translates to you being able to fucking transmute, transmute your issues on the field mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and with grace and, right. and not yeah. be one of those guys that's like a fair weather, like, I got three hits today, so let's go out and have a drink. Yeah, or, let's have fun. If yeah. not, everyone get the fuck away from me, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of real long term benefits to understanding that at your age and and realizing that and doing the work you know what I mean but like as you said doing the work on this is just like doing the work think about all you made a really interesting point you're like I spent my whole life manifesting that debut and look how the debut went think about that though how many reps did you get of that manifestation 
so down. fucking many yeah. over a years and years of time. That habit was built. That vision has was built. You also said something really interesting. Oh, I get goosebumps thinking about it. A huge part of manifestation that I didn't understand. It took me a long time. Is like Smell you it. have to feel it. You know what I mean? Like you have to. When I close my eyes and and you you think about the things you want, um, like I have a certain vision. Like give you know giving my parents a home that they want, you know, and I walk in, I try to imagine what it smells you like. Smell and, the dirt. And, and the I, how that feels, the goosebumps I'd have from handing them the keys, you mm -hmm. know, like that thing. And, and I know it's going to come true at when, in divine timing. But my point is, you did that without knowing, which I did a lot too. I realized that in, in hindsight. I've had my successes because I, I really did manifest habitually. I made a habit of thinking about what I was gonna do when I got on, what I was gonna do when I got on stage, how I was gonna feel. I wasn't really thinking like, oh, I'm manifesting this. Let me sit down and manifest it, you know? But I did that, you know? And, and you said it and you, get, you still get those goosebumps. That's the power of the energy. And, uh, you know, like it really is like, if there's one thing I could drive home to people listening that might think it's like a little woo woo or whatever. It's just like, bro, every guy I sit down with, I like everyone yeah. has their version of this story where it's like, you know, there, there's real power to the mind. There's real power to cultivating your thoughts and cultivating yourself and not just being a fucking jock. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not just being, um, I'm gifted, you know? Like, yeah. that, will get you, that will get you certain places, you know? But you, quarter the way. you could also fucking get there and have great success. But will you have life success? Will mm -hmm. you have balance? Will you have real relationships with people that add value to you? Will you attract the right people? Will you have family, work, life balance, you know? Will you be able to Especially after. enjoy days? Exactly, enjoy days that it's no longer affiliated to the game. You're not cool anymore, you know? Can, are you still cool with yourself? These yeah. are all real issues that athletes struggle with, you know? Um, not not in general, people in general, you know? When you have all the bright lights and claps and applause when you walk in the room, when those fucking fade off, are you, are you still cool with Why yourself? You? Are you proud of yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And these are all really interesting really important conversations you know to for young people to understand because now with you know you're so young with what you know now i mean every fucking day you should be spending time you know manifesting and spending time journaling and thinking and visualizing because that's what happened bro you got to where you are because you fucking wanted it that bad you willed it into the universe you know what i mean yeah and now there's a whole other phase of you're there you know what I mean? You're fucking there. You're there now. You know, like what you what yeah. you willed into existence is there. Now what? You know? And that's that's really like that's the battle that most athletes face. You get there. Think about it like when I put out an album or something, or you mm -hmm. some some big life event. It's, people talk about it like Jimmy Tatro was on and talked about it. He's an actor and a buddy of mine. Mm -hmm. He talked about going on like Jimmy Kimmel, was it? Kilmer? Went on Jimmy Kimmel and like kind of like got off and went like back to his hotel and he was just like this is it you know like he just had this vision of like what that night would be and there's this there's this huge arrival moment and it's it's really never you know not to say that it's never what it, what you envision but there is a real truth to you know these ups and downs and like you get there and you like when I get off stage you got all this energy and people going nuts and shit, right? And then, like, you get back to the bus. I'm just, like, sitting there. I'm just like, all right, what are we going to eat? You know, like, yeah. it's just this weird dichotomy, you know? And you have to know how to emotional intelligence to understand that and, like, be okay and not be too high and be too low. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to be even keel the whole time. Cause yeah. Because when, when you're not, the second I got too high, the universe, the universe will, mm -hmm. it'll teach you. It'll let you know. Yeah. It'll let you know really quick. Yeah. Like, that's... It, like, to put it in perspective, it's like, you know, we talk about off-season training, right? Guys mm -hmm. are going to the gym. They're working out. There's countless gyms in Phoenix, Scottsdale, whatever, that people use in the off-season, baseball yeah. players. You're working out, right? How many of those people go home and do their mental training? Do, do any sort of mental training? Not many of them. Not many of them, right? Well, I've gathered. But how many, how many, and you, and you can relate to this as well. So, like, diving into, like, who you are, like yourself, your core. Mm -hmm. Like there's a there's a lot of recording artists, just like there's a ton of baseball players, mm -hmm. big league, minor league, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like 
you can look at these things like manifesting and you're like, oh, there's already like, there's so many people, so many baseball players. There's Mike Trouts, there's Pujols, mm-hmm. there's Machados, there's mm-hmm. like the best of the best. Mm-hmm. How do you separate yourself from those people? And that is strictly if you can dive in to yourself, mm-hmm. those values that you have being able to, you know, to fight from within. Because yeah. if you don't, if you're not taking, you know, the things from within to help yeah. m- motivate you, push you forward, keep you on a positive level, how can you expect anybody else to buy in on you? Absolutely. You can't. And I think there's a, there's something, there's like a universal truth to letting go, right? And I don't think athletes really have a grasp on letting go because it's just not how you rock, you compete. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's this weird balance but like what i spoke to a little bit earlier when i said like you do all the work then you get in between the lines and you just be you be you you know what i mean like and the fact of the matter is you're in the fucking big leagues you know what i mean like you're one of the best players on the fucking planet you know so at that point you do all the work you do all the mental stuff you go in with the ultimate confidence in yourself and look i've done everything i've done everything i possibly can to be who i'm supposed to be and be myself you know what I mean? And then you just let go. Yeah, you know, because like, of the mental stuff, I've never had to question that. Yeah. Now. Mm. But before, you do half. Sorry to cut you off. Just no, like no. You do half, like, the working out part. Everybody thinks that's like you work out, you compete. You know, you got the best, you got the best cutter in baseball. Mm-hmm. You got the best slider in baseball. You can have the best slider in baseball. You can throw 100, you can throw 100 miles an hour. See and all you the can time. still get crushed. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Yeah. You... Combine that with the manifesting and like really learning who you are as a person. Right. You're going into these games without ever, ever having to worry or question, did I do everything I needed to today? Yeah. So like win or lose, mm. you know, the old win or lose, we booze. It's like a real thing because now yeah. whether I have a good game, bad game, whatever results happen, like I did everything I could. I'm right. walking away from progressive field at night, good or bad, and I'm sleeping the exact same. Mm-hmm. And, and that's been your experience once you've started doing the mental work, you have that. Immediately. Mm. And, but it, like, it literally all started like this past spring training. I was putting my head down at night after journaling and manifesting, and I'd put my little YouTube, t- like YouTube sports, me- like, a like a manifestation, like yeah. what, random sleep meditation thing. Yeah. Is whatever, whichever one I saw, like, okay, I don't want the four hour one, like I need to sleep. Like, we'll see, like, you know, anything hour and under, mm-hmm. just keep going. I was waking up the next day, and I could have told you my line for the game. And I was like, you know, first time throwing. Because I was like that kind of on the odd man out. Like mm. I was like in between. Am I going to sit down? Am I going to make the staff? You know, I, I gave up one run the entire spring training as a starter. Wow. Like first opening day roster. Mm. And I was able to like go to the field, whether it was on the side field, the big game. We had split squad that day, whatever it was, facing, you know, the Angels, whoever. Mm-hmm. I was able to, I, I knew what was going to happen before I got there. And mm. it, did, it, it was the entire spring training. That was mm. my first real like... Oh my God! This is this is this is the first step. Like I I feel it. Yeah. But then I get to regular season, which is regular season's completely different. All these other obstacles and things like that. And mm-hmm. you know I started well, and then it starts to platoon a little bit, and it just went to me like I got there's there's more I can do. There's mm-hmm. more I can dive into. Yeah. And that but that spring chain was the first time I realized like I'm waking up in the morning like feeling and like I'm smelling the grass before I go to bed. Mm-hmm. Like it was. You know, I can, I, I literally am seeing how the pitch is moving that I'm throwing. I'm feeling how it comes off my hands. I'm feeling that one little It's really nail great. Inside. It's like, really great that you're on that it's wave. It's just like when you get on it, like then you just, you, you want more. But you don't want to get to the point where you're trying to find too much because mm-hmm. you need that happy balance of your yeah. regular prep, mental prep, and just having fun. That's yeah, when living. baseball got fun, when I wasn't right. so caught up on like, like, fuck, if I don't pitch well and I get sent down, like, God, you know, we got five more days to a full paycheck. Full paycheck would be nice. Like, mm-hmm. you start thinking about all these things mm-hmm. and, like, service time, you know, whether it's trades, all detaching, that stuff. Detaching, that letting go thought, detaching from the results is your next step. It's just, like, it's, it's everyone's next step, really. It's my, it's my next step in life. Like, I, I write that every fucking day because I'm so, uh, we're such a results-driven fucking society, you know, like, it's all about what have you done, you know, especially in sports. What have you done for me lately? Like, last three, so fuck this guy. Oh, let's get rid of it. You know what I mean? Oh, his family's going through shit. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a business, you know? That's how you want to separate yourself, though. Like, in your, like, I guess my question would be, like, from a baseball aspect, like, you know, we have to separate ourselves, you know, and, and like you said, it's results driven. Mm-hmm. But you have to, you know, dive in from yourself. There's a lot of recording artists, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and you want to separate yourself. You want to be one of the best, you know, yeah. like, you see that because you know how talented you are and, the person you are and stuff like mm-hmm. 
how do you feel you can separate yourself from, you know, a lot of those different, you know, artists? Like that's something, but most people would say like, oh, I got to put out the best album or whatever. I got to be in the inside, studio nine, day, nine yeah, hours a like, day. What is that for you? Like, how does that translate to you? Bro, lot- we have the same answer. And I think that's the most interesting thing. And that's the, kind of the bigger point. I, I think this is the key to success in life is, is, finding, is finding yourself. And getting on the right frequency of receiving and, and abundance and just thinking like, you know, you have every reason to believe that the universe is conspiring for you. Your dreams have come true. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's what you got to remember. For me, how I've separated myself is as I've gone inward, I've actually just gotten, become a better artist. And I don't really take a ton of credit for it. I really don't. I've done all the work and I've always done the work, but... Personally, I feel like what I do is I clear, my work is clearing space to receive. Where do my ideas come from? What are ideas? What are they? You know what I mean? Like some days you have them, some days you don't. Where do they come from? You know, I look at it as like we're tuning. I'm like, think about when you've got a fucking classic radio, you know, if you're three fucking, if it's it's 92.3 as a station, you're on 92.6, what are you getting? Static. That's brain fog. Like, we're, we are a fucking frequency, you know what I mean? We are mm-hmm. a vibration. So when I do the work, I look at, like, I, I change. I mean, we had a podcast. I think the third episode was, like, what's the meaning of life was the name of it. And like, I was evaluating myself, having a very honest conversation. Like, I don't think I'm doing the right things. I could feel it, you know? It was before I really went down this path. And I looked at only my only source of fun was going out and getting fucked up. And... Everything else was kind of a task, it felt like. And I started to realize that was wrong. Like, I had a general distaste towards my day-to-day in and outs. And, like, if you told me five years ago, you'd have this house, you'd be with your boys making music, and you'd tour a musician and make, make millions of dollars, I would say, I'm per- that's my dream life. But why am I waking up and not feeling that way, you know? And mm-hmm. I got called towards this stuff. But to answer your question... I actually view all of life as part of the job. You know what I mean? Like when I go fucking stand on my balcony and I sit on my balcony and just read and write and and think and journal, um, I I really truly feel like that's the work. And then when I'm in the studio, it's just like channeling. Like I'm not even thinking. I'm like barely there. You know, that's really how I feel. And, And then once I had that realization, all of life just kind of became a little more fruitful and like, I'm not really worried, like, oh, I haven't been in the studio in three days, like, ooh, should I be doing this? Like, uh, you know, like, I really look at every, even nights I go out and I can't remember. My fucking subconscious remembers because mm-hmm. it comes out, and, you know what I mean? Like, I, the way I make songs is mainly freestyle-esque. Graham's been there fucking mumbling in the background half the time. <laughs> oh. uh, but, you know, he's been there as I do him, and it's, it's all subconscious, You're not even bro. safe on the other side of the house. Oh yeah. My gosh. Yeah, that's valid. Well, but um yeah, like that's kind of how I view it and it's it's made me a lot more present in my day-to-day life, you know? Like a lot of times I'd be doing something This is an interesting point. Like a lot of times I'd be doing something and kind of be like it's just kind of taking long, you know, like I haven't I wanted to get in the studio and then this came up and I'm just like not there really mm-hmm. all the way. And um I think I spent a lot of my 20s like that. Even just like talking and you know fans pouring their heart out to me and it's just like the ninth day in a row i can barely keep my eyes open i haven't fucking slept in two days i'm about to play a show and like i'm at the end of the meet and greet and this person's pouring their heart out to me telling me how i've saved their life and it wasn't impacting me as much as i felt like you didn't it should feel it. You didn't feel i didn't it feel much. it i was like kind of numb to it and a lot of it was coming from feeling like i had somewhere better to be you know what i mean and now I, don't, I never have that feeling anymore. I, I won't. And when I do come in, I don't let it. Like, even when I'm in traffic, you know, like. You got to acknowledge it. I'm meant to be here, you know. Yeah. I'm meant to, maybe this is a good time to sit and think about something or listen to a good song or talk to my mom or, you know, that's kind of how I started shifting how I navigate my days. I mean, Graham comes in, he's like, oh, how you been? I'm like, fucking great. I haven't even left the house. Like, you would think, in my mind, like, I've seen the world the last five days, but I barely left the house, but. I feel like you can go anywhere yeah. with your mind and be free. And, yeah, that's interesting. You know, it's, it's all about how, what you want with your life and no how you doubt. want to spend your time. But for me, you know, being alone and being able to contemplate and 
work but also not it's like almost work and play is the same thing you know yeah that's why i'm glad you said like you know you like your whole life is is like you know part of your job yeah and and i'm i'm glad you said that because like you talked about like you know you just go and get fucked up and stuff all the time and mm-hmm. like that's also like a big part of like you know a lot of athletes in general like oh, yeah. party i mean like every ath- i'm boys with all athletes in every every sport they all fucking get they after all it. fucking it's get a after release it. you know it's it's part of it it is but you looked at that as like you know your fun like you know and you had to look at your your workout your sport your stuff as more of a job mm-hmm. since i've gotten into this it is completely switched yeah that now i feel a task for me is driving driving to come hang out and get fucked up on new year's mm-hmm. like you know that is that is more of a task mm-hmm. for me now than mm-hmm. like back then it was oh, a really want to go thing. out want to go out want to go out like it's a really good now it's like it's more like i get excitement like you know i used to hate like you know in the gym in the office this was in tampa before i was here like i hated or at the field and spring training like i hated being at the field for so long mm-hmm. and it's like now it's like pitchers spend so much time so much downtime at oh the my fucking god field. yeah it's tough that's a really, that's something. But it's like, I don't like being at, the, you know, you should never want to be at the field that long. Mm-hmm. And it was always like, let's get out of here. Let's go do something. And now it's like, yeah. Like if I'm at the gym from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., it didn't bother me. You got to tune I'm on into my that even wave. more. That's like, really great. I'm on my own wave. It's different. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's times we have fun. Like I'm all about it. Like We've know, had all, some fun. Oh yeah. I'm like, I'm all about it. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, you know, if that becomes like, it, it starts to feel like, if that starts to feel like your, you know, your actual job is a task or like you're, you know, you're just yeah. how you vibe as a person now, like how I vibe as a person now, doesn't, that feels like just like life. Like my life, my job is life. It's yeah. not my job is baseball. My job is life. It's part of my life. Mm. And, you know, that, you know, extracurricular stuff like that, the stuff that used to, you know, make your mind wander, which you would acknowledge it, but would you really acknowledge it and mm-hmm. flip the switch or would you acknowledge it? And be like, ah, whatever. Yeah. That's how it was. So now that is more of a job to me, yeah. like a, a task, an issue, and, and an issue is as far as like, I don't, I don't really want to, I yeah. don't want to do this. It's yeah. more like, you know, like it just changes just your huge, habits. It's just a huge tool to have in your toolbox uh, is to be able to, in real time, adjust your perspective and that comes with 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 reps you know what i mean with repetition but Hard. as an athlete i mean in life in general like it's been a huge tool for me to mm-hmm. stay you know not if i have a bad night or something happens i'm able to get out of it pretty quick where you know who's to say in the last 10 you know however long i've had so many times where it snowball into a fucking week of feeling like shit mm-hmm. you know what i mean and not being present in, in your life you know but on the field, having having the mental awareness to to change the perspective mm-hmm. and accept, just be like uh, accept, accept the like after a guy hits a fucking homer, you know that you see the guys that just that it doesn't it, like it they, does they were it, able like, to get right over the hump and start fresh again. No, it's, and then it's, it's like an art, man. It it's is like an you art. see it happen and you just see that like you see them acknowledge it. It is an art. Anger, and then yeah. the next thing you know, it's yeah, strike one, strike two, strike mm-hmm. three, and then bam, they're right back to the out. next. And it's like, you get done with, like some guy, like I've seen guys that like are so mentally locked in and so good at the the mental side of it is like when they get done, they don't realize, they don't even know what their line is, yeah. dude. They don't know like, you know, I mean, punchies they had. Yeah. But when I first got up, I'm like in my debut, I'm like, ah, oh, it's four scores. I need like three more, two mm-hmm. more to get like a W, like. Two, two and a third two, scoreless. Two, yeah, I'm just like, you're trying to get there. I'm like, okay, I got to keep going. Like, yeah. And you get so results driven versus yeah. the guys that are just so locked in on being in the moment. Yeah. It's, it's the biggest it's change. It's the fucking flow state, right? Yes. It's flow state. And, and what you sh- everything you're talking about, this whole conversation is revolving around being able to put yourself and allow yourself to be in flow state out there. When I talk about having fun and mm-hmm. I talk about, like, the guys, like, in it, like, the MMA guys, like, when they go in there, they don't fucking remember. It's all, they've done all the work and the preparation, and then now it's all reaction. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all responsibility. Like, how am I going to respond to what he does in flow? I'm not, I don't have time to think and duck. It's instinctive because I've done the work. You know what I mean? And now I'm, now I'm in flow. I don't even remember what happened. There's guys who don't even remember how they knocked the guy out. You know what I mean? That one is just so life or death, fight or flight. That's a great example in sports of how you need to achieve flow state to really be at your best, you know, and to let go. You know, what's going to happen is going to happen. You're going to go on and have a fucking incredible career because you're meant to. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you're actually driven. You're figuring out the foundation it needs to 
the mansion needs to be built on a real right. foundation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's and it's evolving thing. It's it's about growth. You know. Yeah, you can ask you can ask the universe for that mansion, but you've got to yeah build your own foundation. It's exactly. Just, and it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of time, and it requires a lot of patience. And the work is, the work is the payoff. If that makes any sense. Yeah. You doing the work, like it just becomes who you are, and you're just a better person. Your girlfriend building. has better yeah. conversations with you. Your yeah. mom has a better connection because you have this patience. Because you've been patient with yourself. You it's know like what I mean? building equity in yourself. Exactly. It's like you're, the work you're putting in is instantly paying off. You don't you don't realize it exactly. at that moment. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, dang, all of those things I did. She's gonna hold you to this. Be like, engulfing, a, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's engulfing like it's engulfing everything together inside of you. And then next thing you know, like, you know, what you're asking the universe for, it happens. And then mm -hmm. you start to look back on your timeline. You start to look back at the things you it did. It can happen, man. Like you're right there. You have all the you have the right vibe about you. You know what I mean? It it happened to me. I I, I have this knowing now that I'm just I've let go of it. Like I know it's gonna I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna doesn't I don't know where the I don't know where the end of this happen. is or what, what it's gonna happen. I just know yeah. it's I, I'm gonna will it. Gonna I'm gonna will. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna will it, and I'm gonna enjoy it. And yeah, there's a million different ways it could go. A million. The a biggest, million. biggest thing is not trying to pick which way it goes. Yeah, you just gotta let it pick its own road, dude. Mm -hmm. And that's like let go. That is the that is the hardest. I'm gonna thing put, I you have to shit. put you on some shit. Put you on. Yeah, yeah you put me stuff. on. I don't, John. I very rarely get guests, and what's fucked up because I'm a great host. But um, <laughs> fantastic host and modest <laughs> and extremely modest. <laughs> yeah, um, the greatest salesman in the world. This is uh, you know I'm a reader. So we talked about this on New Year's, but you were talking to a shell of me at that point. Oh so. my god! But I recall, yeah. I recall this conversation. Um, did he bring you this book? He did. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's a big dick move right there. It is. Yeah. It is. John, are you happy to get some words in on this one? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been sitting in a while. You've for been 40 a silent host. I've been, I've been like waiting for him to like chip in a little bit. Yeah, feel free to fucking. You guys have had this beautiful conversation, and I generally ruin it by opening my mouth. Yeah, you just say like, if you so watch, who have you fucked lately, Mike? <laughs> He always comes in with some toned <laughs> down some sexual comment. Um, the greatest salesman in the world. Have you? You've obviously this is a, this yeah, is a so, short read, but it's it, yeah, a, it's a short read. Walk us I, through because this is we have a Steve's book club. It's a real thing where we like oh. we uh, you know anytime I'm reading something, I shine a little light on it. Usually, I get tons of messages like, "Yo, read that, loved it." You know, so um, I haven't read this yet. I just got it, but I'm gonna fucking read it today. Right, so uh, Molly's brother Jeffrey put me on this early in the season. Um, you know, he read it, and I mean, like, was I've never seen him or heard him talk about something so much uh -huh. every day. Like, he's got a whole feeling. Mind of, just lights you up. And I'm like, yeah, this has got to be crazy. And then, you know, Molly and I start reading it. So the basis of this book, it's really small. And I'm like, oh, this is really, really small. But The Greatest Salesman in the World by O.G. Mandino. Yeah, so the biggest uh, the biggest point of it was there's nine scrolls in there, right? Mm -hmm. There's like it's like nine stories, yep. and it, it wants you to read each one every morning for thirty days straight. So you read the first scroll for in the morning when you wake up for thirty straight days. Yeah, don't look at the next one. Yeah. Then you read two, do the same thing all the way through nine. So a small book, but it wants you to take nine oh, months yeah. to read it, right? Um, to be honest, I didn't do that because once you read one and two, like you're just you got what's next you got to read it right and it yeah. goes through all these things and like you know at first i'm like i oh, start everything starts to resonate more and more and more yeah. and then when you put the whole thing together it's oh like, yeah wow and like you know uh scroll two i believe it was the one like talks about like moving in love and like like i had talked about earlier like you know we have a similarity as far as you know there's a lot of recording artists there's a lot of baseball players and like you know moving with love and good intentions so like mm-hmm you know, as much as, you know, you can think people have good intentions and move with love. And that's just, you know, based on how, I, you know, I was raised and how I grew up. So it was mm -hmm. like everything was about like, you know, other people helping, being, being empath like showing empathy and moving with love. But yeah. there's people in our businesses that have no problem doing yeah. anything they possibly can to, you know, move up to their, to move up in the world, whether it's, you know, materialistic things, yeah. you know, bad mouthing people, like things like that. And mm -hmm. I, and that, you know, when I read that, I like, it resonated with me because I've always been, oh, you're too nice or this and that. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, like when you move with love. I almost love, said that to you earlier when you said that, like, I'm too nice. It says no such no, thing. No, because love always, like moving with love, like those are the people that succeed. It wins in the end and it like talks it about all that. And then it, that's, it, it it also that. talks about taking all those things and like everything it talks about. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but like learning to love yourself from within. And that's 
the difference thing. So it's like the greatest salesman in the world, mm -hmm. little tidbit. Like he realizes there's so many different salesmen and like how does he, you know, separate himself? Like, you know, if it's like selling real estate, whatever it is, like there's tons of salesmen in the world. Mm -hmm. He digs within to find that and that's, it Absolutely. builds good habits. It takes, it's supposed to teach you like about the benefits of good habits Mm -hmm. Right. And there's there's bad habits. But the only way to take away those bad habits and things that affect your your persona is to add good habits and make good mm -hmm. habits. And then, yeah, the book was it was amazing. Yeah, I got a book for you to read. The the monk, the monk that sold his Ferrari. I'm, I'm reading it. I've read it twice now. I'm still reading it. And I locked it. Annotating in. and like my, my younger version would be like dork. Yeah. Right. I'm like up on the fucking balcony with my shirt off, just getting sunburned, fucking an oh highlighting the same book. God. See, I could never read a book without like falling asleep until I got into this stuff. Yeah. And now like, and, and now it's like anything. It's like, the best. It, you get lost in it instead of getting lost. You got to read this book because it, it talks to. from a layman's term. It, it's really, it sounds like it's, it works in congruence with this, but um, yeah, Steve's check it out. I, let's read an excerpt, a reading from the book of Steve. <laughs> I will put uh, this. So this is like the, I guess the intro. Um, I will pers I will persist until I succeed. I was not delivered into this world into defeat, nor does failure course in my veins. I'm not a sheep waiting to be prodded by my shepherd. I'm a lion, and I refuse to talk, walk, to sleep with the sheep. The slaughterhouse of failure is not my destiny. I will persist until I succeed. Sounds like a keep going parable, if I've ever heard one. Right? Yeah, there. I'm fired up. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm ready to run to a fucking wall. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was man. good, though. No stutters, nothing. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, man, it's been, been a while since I've read aloud. I was a little nervous. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, it's uh, been a great, really great to get to know. That's why I love podcasting so much, because talk about presence. I, and I, I, I try to do this as much as I can when I'm out in public, but I also use it as like a get away from me card a little bit sometimes, like take my phone out. I'm like, Mm -hmm. they can walk away you know what i mean right. like there's a little bit of an element to that sometimes being out and and you know you have those types of scenarios sometimes but really being present in a conversation like when's the last time you're truly just totally present in a conversation nothing else nothing else really mattered you know what i mean like there's always like oh, something comes up on tv guy walks in you know what i mean am i hungry let me look at the fucking you know like there's just never this and that's the beauty of meditation and taking time to yourself where you don't allow yourself to be distracted and don't, you know, you kind of have a purpose. That's why these conversations are so cool because, I mean, we've had a lot of conversations right. in fucking happenstance and just, wait, when did we meet? That was on my birthday. Yeah, it was on your birthday. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my Ooh. God. Oh, Scott's, my though, God. Scott still really got a fucking real aggressive version of me on you that. You mean the birthday that lasted five days straight? Yeah, it was a birth <laughs> week. You know, it was a birth week celebration. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to get to know people at this level and to... And to understand, you know, it's just a really, it's a really great thing. And I think um, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of upside. Like I didn't, I wasn't thinking like you were thinking at your age at all. And, uh, people say that, but it's also like, that's just, I feel like it was all because, I don't want to say it's all because of how I grew up, but going up that way, like it yeah. forced me to grow up sooner. Whereas like I was looking, totally. I was thinking about that. I'm like, you know, if I was, uh, you know, normal, a little bit normal. Like, what if I didn't find out about this till I was 30, right? Like, maybe, mm -hmm. like, baseball would never have been a thing for me. Maybe yeah. big leagues wouldn't have been a thing for me. Maybe, like, you know, like, I could have been having this conversation with someone, the younger version of me, as a coach or something. Like, you never, yeah. like, that, it puts that stuff in perspective. But, like, that's... You gotta, let, you gotta dance with life, man. Oh, you gotta dance it with is. it. It's a great dancing partner. You, you gotta, it's like, you can't do the fucking tango by yourself. You know what I mean? You need to... That dance with the universe That's a little right. bit, and like, yeah. bro, think about fucking, like, all right, my good, our, some of our good friends I met through Graham. I just saw the girl yesterday. Like, she almost died in a fucking like Final Destination esque. Oh my god, the train, train oh train yeah. crash. Yeah. Where just like it was literally like a Black Mirror episode where like the technology of the Tesla failed yes. them and like wouldn't yeah. allow them to move. We were just they were blocked about in, that. and you know, it's just. It's just really, like, I, she said something to me. I was just, like, really affirm that. She's just, like, we turned around right before that happened to get some White Claws. They were about to be home, and they turned around and went and got some White Claws. Obviously, if they didn't turn around, that wouldn't happen. They wouldn't have been there, you know? And 
if you take that into your day-to-day experience, um, you don't even know. Like, you getting, you know, getting in a bumper, you know, a fucking fender bender yeah, I, I, that makes you late. Who knows what happens if you were driving ahead? Who Like, who? there's just no way of even trying to plan or understand what's going to happen. So it's back to that idea of just, like, being where you're supposed to be. Try to be where you're supposed to be. Just yeah. try to be where you're supposed to be and try to be your best when you're there, yeah. you know? And, like, they're, they're really, this is the You Never Know podcast. You really just never fucking know, you know? And, yeah. and, like, taking a left. You take a right, however you met Molly. You take a left, and you might have met her on the street corner down there. You know, that's just yeah, an example. I mean, but like, the car accident thing was just a huge example for me because I used to do that. Like, why did... Right. This happened, like, if I didn't do this, if I didn't do this, a year and, what's the date today, 18th? Yeah. So, two days from now was a year from my car accident. I was right across the street from my house, on the way, came back from the field, decided to grab, like, to, to grab, like, uh, alkaline water, or, like, whatever, mm-hmm. aqua hydrate stuff. I was trying mm-hmm. to get into, like, you know, Fucking aqua staying, hydrate. I was just staying hydrated, you know? And... Yeah, I grabbed that, grabbed a couple beers, and I'm like literally throwing distance from my house down in Old Town. I could have thrown a baseball like over two houses and just and it hit mine. It was right across the street. Yep. I had two cars in front of me, our light, our, you know, the light goes green, one car goes right, second car goes straight, I'm the third car going straight. Wham, driver's side door. Lady going 65, ran the red light on wow. school. Brand new, brand new car, like all this, like it crushed me. Mm-hmm. And the whole time, I mean, I was, I had, luckily I was okay, like nothing crazy. Like I saw it early enough to like try to reach, like take my left arm and reach for the other side. Like, mm-hmm. but it, it put in perspective to me that my mindset needed an adjustment. And that sounds crazy. Like, oh, terrible car accident. Sounds crazy like, to me. I mean, so it was a mindset change because all I could think about was like, why didn't I just do what I normally do and stay at the house and like Uber eats it? Yeah. I got off my couch and was like, oh, I'm just going to not be lazy this time. Drove across the street, whatever, and got mm-hmm. whacked. Yeah, and that's was, no. That's not your fault. It's to know. It's just the way. That, it's the way this all unfolds, you know. But like it was. It was. I just knew that. Like, why am I thinking about that? Like, you mm. know, like the, those little things. Like that, it puts it in perspective. And like the same thing. Like when we heard about that, the you know the accident with the train, and train Tesla and all that. Like not. it was. Abs- I couldn't believe it. Like I'm like running through this in my head. Like and then hearing you say that. Like mm. and then when they stopped turning around, went got white claws. Like, mm. and but you know instead of like being, you know grateful they're you know still with us like mm-hmm. you know the first thing they talked about was like mm-hmm. ah, if we didn't go turn around and get white clothes. yeah i mean it's how it's how it's, how you're it's human nature about but it, it's yeah. like acknowledging that and being able to mm-hmm. you know push through it like it's crazy. yeah i mean they all made it it's all good news you literally never you're like you literally you never know you never, like i could have never right, fucking know literally could have made it right through that thing and then somebody from the other way like it's yeah you never the universe know. is insane it's crazy bro and and then but again i, I love her there's the, everyone We'll end on this. Like, everyone thinks you, you take control of your life. You know what I mean? And, and there's validity to that. But the real power is in letting go. You know what I mean? And, like, it, you could call it God. You could call it the universe or anything. It's just, like, you know, there's a quote, like, we make plans and then God laughs. You know? Like, it's just not possible, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and if you're able to stay in tune with that, while you try to steer your life where you want to go with the best intentions, I think that's where you find yourself in the best positions, you know? And, and there isn't a rhyme or reason. Some people have no rhyme or reason to have the most horrific things happen to them, you know? And, mm-hmm. and you know what? Even then, we don't understand. We don't understand what happens next. We don't understand. Like, there's, it's out of our realm of understanding. Yeah, there's two ways to look at Just it. Just let go, you know? Yeah, and I think it gives really you a ton of freedom, bro. It's a liberating feeling. I, I feel that way, you know? I, I, I want that for everybody, just to to let go and let let the universe conspire and unfold the way it's going to unfold, yeah. you know? It's just, you never know, man. One way or another. It's You're on the uh, Cleveland Guardians now. Is that an official change? Did I see official that? Official name change. Officially the Cleveland Guardians as a... That's an interesting, that's an interesting name change. How do you feel about it? Oh, I don't know. I knew you were going to throw, the, throw that at me. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about it? This is the one sound bite. We have this beautiful conversation like... <laughs> just how do you feel about Logan it? Logan Allen dissing the Cleveland Guardians. <laughs> Fucking minute sixty nine of the conversation. Just li- uh, just lie and say you like it. Yeah, just say you like it. I'll say it's gonna be a little tough to adjust. I feel like Indians are such a classic adjustment thing. Adjustment period is gonna be. It is, and it, the adjustment period's tough. And like the fans, like, it'll be fine. 
They'll be fine, but you can tell when they when we announced it, they did not like it no. one bit. I mean, I I didn't know what to say about it. And to be honest, a lot of baseball players can give their opinion in this, but at the end of the day, it's still a business. Like, yeah. you know what? Your favorite team is whatever team signing your paycheck. Exactly. You, whatever favorite team you grew up. You know, I grew up, I grew up a Red Sox fan, so it was like, yeah, you know. But that doesn't mean that oh, that's not my favorite team. My favorite mm-hmm. team's whoever you know, you right. know signing, signing the checks, but. It was different. I mean, uh, it was a little shocking. I, we knew they were going to do it. Didn't know how fast they were going to do it. And then we have, a, a, we have a fireworks show. And towards the end of the season, and they're like, Molly was there too. And family's there. And like my family's first fire, big fireworks show at the end of the season, they have the scoreboard. And they're putting up the announcement of the name change and stuff. You know, 30-something thousand people. And it is just booze. Raining city. down booze. And for the rest of the fireworks show. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> That's such a funny It yeah. makes you question, like, okay, so who wanted like this yeah. change? But well, like, no, it's I, you political. Get it. I mean, it's, it's yeah. you get it. It's political. And, you know, like, I, I love the city of Cleveland. They've been so good to me. And they're, yeah. it's, it's a really, really, really nice town. Yeah. It's just that. Oh, that, we've, we've uh, ransacked Cleveland a handful of times. Oh, my God. We've given Cleveland our best. Didn't Blue get lost there in Cleveland? We left them. That ain't hard. Uh, that yeah. doesn't really narrow down the cities. But <laughs> yeah, it does. we're going to go there uh, this April. We are. Yeah, that's right. We are. Are you going to be able to come to the show? I think we're in. Work out? I think we're in. We leave for, I think we leave for Boston or New York the day before or the okay. day after. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember what it was? It was we're like right around then because we're, we, we, we're in New York, I think, when you guys are in New York too. I think. I think we'll have to come, right after Cleveland. We'll oh, have to yeah. come see that one. Absolutely. Let me, right. Maybe get. Drink a few uh, adult beverages, you know, Mike, depend, you know, depending you, on the rotation. You know, uh, you know Cleveland's going to be my birthday that night. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Sorry for Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a good I'd one. I'd love a video of Blue and like Barley House or something. Like oh, we've, would... Barley House has seen us for sure. They've, oh, they've seen gosh. all of us. Oh, my God. They've seen all of us. Barley House is really the spot out there. I mean, it's just not like it's... Uh, it's not a ton. No, to... I mean, you have like, you know, they have some rooftop bars and stuff like yeah. that. But as far as like, there's only like two, like... Two, three places. I mean, there's a like Forward Hospitality Group does all their stuff mm. over there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kipnis and his boys and stuff. Like, you know, they when I first mm-hmm. was there, like, put you on the spots and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, it's just such a sports town. Like, you kind of forget it is. about like people don't realize Cleveland like really is a sports town. Like, it is. Yeah, they'll you know I have a bad game, they'll motherfuck me to death locking yeah. the field. But like at the same time, like you got to appreciate how much they love. Do you walk to the field? Sports. I did in 2020. I lived right across the street. You suck, Alan! <laughs> oh throws a slurpee God, at you. Dude. Oh, my gosh. There's booze in the background, fireworks. <laughs> Everyone's booing. Dude, that, it hasn't ever been that bad. only time it was that bad was, was San Diego, walking out of Dodger Stadium. I, got, I wore Dippin' Dots on my suit. Yeah. Sometimes you got to wear some Dippin' Dots. It was worth it. It was a cool yeah. story. But, yeah, yeah I love Cleveland. At I least just, it was Dippin' Dots. Probably just yeah, balls just like roll them off. Bounce right you know? off you. Just... You know, Gosh. better than a shake or a beer bottle or something like that. God, yeah. bless. I don't know. But. Yeah. I mean, shout out to the sports fans. You guys are just fucking nuts. But shout out to you. Oh, um, man. But yeah, man, great conversation. I'm, I'm excited to watch. Uh, I don't watch a lot of sports, to be honest. It's ironic. But um, obviously, to keep up with my boys, and it's been great yeah. to get to know you. We've had some good times. Old towns. Oh, yeah. We've had a few. I think my, my birthday night was a fucking extravaganza, obviously. That's when I, that's when I first met you. So birthday yeah. night was You're probably like, this guy's. Nuts. No, like he was I, was, I was honestly more impressed that like, cause like seeing Graham when I had first got there, like Graham was on another planet. Yeah, yeah, I'm able, I'm able to, I'm able to put my fucking hat, you know, like I'm able to but gather like, myself. Like, 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 tell him, but like, it wasn't until I saw you like deep throwing a bottle of Vu standing on a couch. <laughs> hey, deep, easy on the deep throw. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Crushing, was it Chug Bud? Crushing. No, was a bottle of it was a the big bottle of Vu as soon as we got to, I think it was Bevy. Yeah. And, but you were standing on like couch cushions where like, they were like the makeshift. They did that outdoor. So I had pretty thing. good balance. Yeah, like for like for like the time now it was, it was unbelievable. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, we're all like, I'm like, look at him, man. I don't I'm know still how. an athlete, you know. Oh my gosh! Like still it was, it was unbelievable. I was like, oh well, you know. Yeah, you like, saw, you this saw. Guy it. Get, this guy gets after it. It was like, a great introduction to me. It was, it was impressive. Not many people get to see that. It's not very often. But it's not very often. But yeah, that was a real one. That was oh a real one. God, I mean, this place awesome. has been great. Old Town's been awesome. Obviously, it's own beast, but Scottsdale in general, Arizona, I fucking love. Just fucking have everything love here, man. Yeah, I would love. I'd love to have a place here permanently. I mean, I'm, I'm on a legendary house house run here. I think this is like my fifth house. We've just been fucking. We're nomads right now. I, you, you know that. I've told you this. Yes. Right? Yeah. We're nomadic completely, but I assume we're gonna settle in Nashville for a bit. I don't know. Who knows? You never know. But we'll definitely be spending some time. 
I'm gonna be here for the open. Are you gonna be around for the open? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's like been still- you guys all gotta come. Um, I'm playing. Uh, I'm doing hi-fi on the Thursday. Oh, that would be so sick. Yeah, you yeah. guys come by, and then Friday I'm gonna go to the open, and then I'll probably skip town. Yeah, we're I- doing Friday. We're. I mean, if you, I feel bad for them seeing whoever sees me on Sunday. Oh my god! <laughs> if I'm starting on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, we'll be we'll be uh, we'll be here for that, and then. Well, we're locked out right now. Like, I can't talk to anybody with the team. We're still in a lockout. Oh, shit. We have I, I totally forget about that. I just, like, we don't even know spring starting on time, whatever. We just had our first meetings, like the owners and the union did. So Yeah. I don't know. I mean, as of now, we'll be here. But no. Yeah. If not, you guys just come on tour. Just check know. it out, you know? You never know. Become a touring musician yourself. Maybe give you an opening set. Looks uh, like a country guy a little that'd bit. That'd be sick. We can yeah, do it. totally. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good, good head of lettuce. It's a good start. We can try it. We can start. Yeah. But cheers, bro. Great times. Thank you for coming through, man. Great conversation. Absolutely.